Hello and welcome to Storytime with Mr. Ryan. On September 22nd, we celebrate the birthday of famed English scientist and physicist Michael Faraday, who contributed greatly to the study of electromagnetism and electrochemistry. Faraday was an accomplished lecturer and orator who helped even young children learn about the principles of science, like in his lecture, The Chemical History of a Candle given at the Royal Institution in 1848. Today we learn about that lecture in Burn by Darcy Pattinson with illustrations by Peter Willis. Let's hop on in. It was 3 p.m. on December 28, 1848 in London, England. Horses whinnied, excited boys and girls stepped out of carriages into the crowded one-way Albemarle Street and pushed into the Royal Institution. They were excited. This was a day that they would not talk about science. Instead, they would see science. Mr. Michael Faraday, director of the laboratory, would be giving the children's Christmas lecture. It cost one guinea to attend. About 4,000 people crowded onto hard wooden benches. The three-story auditorium was stacked so everyone in the audience could see the experiment desk. In previous years, some experiments turned fiery. People sat back, not too close. Mr. Faraday stepped up to the lecture table and began, I bring before you the chemical history of a candle. I must first tell you of what candles are made. The candle I have in my hand is a stearin candle made of ox fat. Then here is a sperm candle which comes from the purified oil of the sperm whale. Here also are yellow and refined beeswax from which candles are made. Here too is that curious substance called paraffin and some paraffin candles. Now as to the light of the candle, we will light one or two and set them at work. The candle is a solid, and how is it that the solid can get up to the place where the flame is? This is a wonderful thing about a candle. You see that a beautiful cup is formed. As the air comes to the candle, it moves upward because of the heat of the flame, and so it cools the sides of the wax. The cup is formed by the air rising, which keeps the outside of the candle cool. What is the cause? Why does it occur? I hope you will always remember that whenever a result happens, especially if it be new, you should say, what is the cause? Why does it occur? But how does the flame get hold of the fuel? There is a beautiful point about that. Capillary action. Capillary action, you say? Well, never mind the name. It is by what is called capillary action that the fuel is carried to the part where the combustion or burning goes on. Capillary action happens when two things won't dissolve in each other, but instead hold together. When you wash your hands, you take a towel to wipe off the water. Capillary action makes the towel become wet with water. In the same way, a candle's wick is made wet with the wax. The melted wax climbs the cotton wick to get to the top. Other wax particles follow because the wax particles are attracted to each other. As the wax particles reach the flame, they are gradually burned. The only reason why the candle does not burn all down the side of the wick is that the melted wax extinguishes or puts out the flame. Now as to the shape of the flame, it is a bright oblong, brighter at the top than toward the bottom, with the wick in the middle and certain darker parts toward the bottom. There is a current formed which draws the flame out. You may see this by taking a lighted candle and putting it in the sun so as to get a shadow thrown on a piece of paper. You see streaming upward the current of hot air, which draws out the flame, supplies it with air, and cools the sides of the cup of melted fuel. It is too bad, said Mr. Faraday. 
that we have not gotten farther, but we must not keep you beyond your time. Well, thank you guys so much. This was the first of a series of six lectures delivered in 1848 on the chemistry and historical makeup of a candle and how it works. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about this physicism, a little bit about this chemistry, and understanding how a candle works, how a flame emerges, and the makeup of the flame. I hope you're able to take what we learned today and apply it to something in your life you've been wondering about. And I hope you this encourages you to read and learn more about Michael Faraday, an enormous scientist with a humble beginning. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you, Mr. Faraday, for your wonderful lectures for the children. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. I know it was a lot of technical science, but it was still enjoyable to me. I encourage you guys to check out other stories on this channel, and if you're looking for fun activities you can do from home, be sure to check out veronalibrary.org children. Until next time, I'll be seeing you. Bye-bye.